Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. It's been a little while since we've taken a look at the MSI Claw, but recently MSI released an overboost feature for the Claw and they're claiming up to a 30% increase in gaming performance across the board. I've personally been waiting for something like this to hit the MSI Claw because as we know, when this was initially released, uh, we weren't seeing great performance. But with this new overboost feature, I'm actually really hopeful that we will see that increase that MSI is claiming. And basically, in order to get this up and running correctly, you will need to update the BIOS and you will need to update the MSI Center M. Plus, you always want that new ARC GPU driver. Checking out the official MSI announcement, they've got a couple charts here, up to 30% increase in gaming performance. And right here, this is the old BIOS and the old MSI Center M versus the new BIOS and the new Center M, or Center Mobile, I guess that's what they're calling it. Definitely looks like we're getting a gain in all of the games that they've listed here. Obviously, some are more than others, but this is really going to rely on the new 109 BIOS and the new MSI Center M. So this is the 2405-1401 Center M, and you can update directly from within the center. And another thing you really need to keep up to date here is the Intel Arc graphics driver. They've got another chart here, and they state an average 20% better performance than competitors in the top 100 most popular Steam games. And this is facing off against the ROG Ally with the Z1 Extreme, not the lower end version. Speculation was that this was kind of facing off against the Z1 CPU, the non-extreme. But yeah, at least from the chart, they're claiming an average of 20% better performance than that in the top most popular Steam games. And of course, these are all charts. We really need to get into a little bit of testing just to see if we've got a nice little uplift in performance here. A lot of this stuff was tested at 1080p. Low settings and XESS or XE super sampling was set at performance. To get here, I needed to fully update everything. I did this from the MSI Center. We're going to head into our settings, update, just let it scan, see what needs to be updated. There was that 109 BIOS update, MSI Center also needed to be updated, and we had a new ARC graphics driver. And, and with the latest BIOS update, it can all be done within Windows. We don't need a separate USB drive or anything like that. But once I had everything updated, did a quick reboot, went back into the MSI Center, and from our user scenario, we've now got a little section up at the top, little switch, Overboost. And in the documentation, it states you need to be in extreme performance mode. We're going to enable Overboost, and we'll have to do a reboot. So it'll prompt us to reboot. We can go ahead and do it right now. But it does give us a little bit of a warning, stating that some apps that utilize virtualization may not function properly when Overboost is enabled. I still want to get the best gaming performance I can out of this thing. I've been waiting a long time to get, you know, a nice little update for the MSI Claw. Now that I'm completely rebooted, I've got everything enabled. Extreme performance mode, overboost is enabled. And now I want to see if this really helps out. I've got a bunch of games to test, and I also wanted to run at least one synthetic benchmark just to see if it would help out with that. When it comes to the Ultra 155H versus, let's say, the Z1 Extreme, in synthetic benchmarks, the 155H usually comes ahead, but in real world gaming, it is fallen behind. So definitely keep that in mind. I'm going to be using 3D Mark Time Spy, and on the last BIOS for the MSI Claw, we had that 155H at 35 watts. We got a total score of 3,677. At 35 watts on the ROG Ally with that Z1 Extreme, we're around 3,186. For the most part, since the MSI Claw was released in the synthetic benchmarks, it has been beaten out that Z1 Extreme, but not in real world gaming. But now, with the overboost feature enabled on the MSI Claw, we're at 4,016, which is really great for an iGPU. And without overboost in extreme performance mode on the MSI Claw, we can boost up to around 30 watts. With overboost enabled, I have seen it boost up to around 35, so they are throwing some more wattage at it. But there's also something else going on here. I think it's offloading a little more power over to the GPU when it's needed, and that's something I've been wanting to see on these Ultra chips since they released. So Overboost definitely isn't going to help out with battery life, but it will help out with gaming performance. Here's Genshin Impact, 1080p, high settings at 60fps. If you take a look at Afterburner, you can see that our CPU package power is around 28 watts here. And again, when it needs it, with that Overboost enabled, this will go up to 35. I also wanted to test out Hades 2 just to see what it would take to run this at 120 hertz. This game is absolutely amazing. I love the original. The new one is, in my opinion, even better. 
15 watts here running super smooth and we can actually get away running this game at 60 1080p high settings at 8 watts on this unit and that way you're going to get pretty good battery life but yeah i mean we're kind of maxed out here at 120 hertz just to see if it would do it and it's handling it just fine When the MSI Claw initially released, I was really disappointed with the Forza Horizon 5 performance. This game usually runs on everything pretty well, and on the initial BIOS with the MSI Claw, the 155H version, we had to drop this down to low settings, 1080p, and enable XESS to get an average of around 74 FPS. Right now, we're at 1080 medium settings with no scaling. We're seeing an average of around 87 FPS with this, which is a pretty big jump given that we're not using any XESS or FSR here. And I do think if you didn't mind running this at 900p with some XESS, you could run this at 120 medium settings 900p. The performance I'm seeing right here is matching the ROG Ally with that Z1 Extreme. If you watch my channel, you know I play this game quite a bit. So I've just set the handheld stationary using an Xbox controller, make it a little easier on me. We've got Spider-Man remastered, and you're going to see the same kind of performance here with Spider-Man Miles Morales. This is pretty good, but we are at 1080p, low settings, and XESS is set to performance. And if you check out Afterburner, we're right there at 29 to 30 watts. I figured we'd be maxing this out with that overboost enabled up to 35, but uh, it's a little lower than I thought. And I do have that unlocked frame rate, so locking this down, you're not going to pull as much. I've been playing Fallout 4 again quite a bit ever since Bethesda gave us that update, and some people hated it, some people liked it. For the most part, I have seen some performance issues here and there, but on the MSI Claw with all of these updates enabled, we can run this at 1080 medium at around 79 FPS on average. Here's the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and I've run this quite a bit on the MSI Claw. Back when it was initially released, we saw an average of 42 FPS, low settings, 1080p, XESS set to performance. Now with those same exact settings, we hit that magic number, getting an average of 69. Nice. I personally don't play Fortnite, but I still wanted to test it out because I know there's a lot of people out there that might want to play this on their handheld. And at low settings 1080p with these new updates, we're seeing some great performance. Unfortunately, this isn't one that I tested before on the older stuff, so I'm not exactly sure what we would have saw there. But right now, we're getting an average of 88 FPS. And remember, I mean, we're at 1080. Even setting these games down to 900p on this 7-inch display, they still look really good. Having that smaller display really kind of condenses everything. And if you're looking to save battery life, V-Sync at 60 is probably your best friend. And the final game I wanted to test is Cyberpunk 2077. This has always given us issues on ARC GPUs, even higher-end desktop ARC systems. Right now, we're at 1080 low with XESS set to performance. We still can't break that 60 mark here. And this has kind of been the case at 1080p. But even before, at 900p, we still couldn't break that 60 mark very well. Now, we're seeing averages around 71 FPS. And I don't think that this has a lot to do with Overboost. I really think it's due to the new ARC driver. Intel is constantly updating that driver. And, you know, if you go over to their change log, you can see exactly what's changed, what kind of performance gains you're seeing. Usually, they're kind of referring to the desktop ARC systems. But a lot of this does trickle down to the iGPUs. So yeah, this new overboost feature definitely works. Really glad to see this. We've definitely been waiting for some performance optimizations for the MSI Claw since it released. And anybody who's got one definitely should update to this. But it hasn't fixed every single issue with the MSI Claw. And one of the main things I hear about are older games crashing due to the Archive GPU. There are some community patches that will allow you to run those games, but you know, I think a lot of that does need to be ironed out on the driver side of things. But I do think that this is a step in the right direction from MSI, especially for people who already picked up the MSI Claw and didn't end up returning it. Some people just kind of set it down, didn't mess with it anymore. If you're one of those people with the Claw, time to break it back out, run all of these updates, and see if you're happy with the performance it's putting out now. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I will be keeping an eye on ARC drivers and more updates from MSI. I'll post everything over in my community section. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.